Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're talking about the ENFP in love, dating, and romance. What is the ENFP like in love and dating? What can you expect from the ENFP as a partner? What does an ENFP need fundamentally as an ENFP? What do you need to feel happy with your partner, your friends, and your family? What do you need from your environment in order to maintain a healthy flow? And the idea I want to run by you from New Jungian typology is every type has a certain amount of traits that they naturally possess and express and give and share with other people. For ENFPs, it's their free spiritedness, it's their diversity, their variation, their ability to bring change around them, their ability to bring out new ideas and to be catalysts, their, idea t- their ability to seek and find new things and make new discoveries. The ENFPs are the people that bring honesty on the table. They are authentic and real with others. They share truth with other people. They express themselves and they have and hold a lot of personality. Personal quirks, you know, things about how they dress and act and appear. A sense of identity and a sense of who I am and who I want to be and what I value and what I don't value. The ENFPs are also very expressive and very affectionate types. However, there are certain things that ENFPs cannot naturally give or express. Things that are more difficult for them, but things that they still very much need in order to feel happiness and in order to feel health and good vibes. And these four things are found in introverted intuition, introverted feeling, intuitive judging, and in feeling judging. Uh, ENFPs greatly need focus, but they do not naturally possess it. ENFPs greatly need privacy, but they do not naturally hold it. ENFPs greatly need sensitivity, but they do not naturally possess it. And the ENFPs greatly need kindness and support from others. And it's something that they struggle to find within themselves. Struggling to find a peace, to sit down and listen and think about something. Struggling to focus on an idea and work through for a longer time. Struggling to uh, communicate and support themselves and to be nice to themselves and to be good to themselves as they work towards something or try to aim for something. So naturally this is something the ENFP will seek in another partner. The ENFP will look for a partner that will be focused, private, sensitive and kind. These four things They are great for an ENFP and they help give the ENFP what they need to feel flow. The ENFP hopes that these traits from the other person will rub off on them. That they will be given privacy and space to develop their ideas. That they will be given focus and discipline to work on an idea for a longer time. That they will be given the chance to really go deep in something. The chance that they will discover a rabbit hole to fall down in and to truly discover and search true, you know. The the idea that uh, they will get the loving and supporting and kind partner that will help them if they should fall or stumble. Or while they are being themselves, if they accidentally say something or get into a bad situation, that they will have backup and a partner that will support them and hold them up and won't try to just fix them or change them or push them or tell them I told you so. So the ENFP will naturally search search for these qualities in an INFJ personality type. The INFJ represents you know the positive needs of the ENFP but there are also four negative needs that the ENFP has that make the equation a lot more complicated. The ENFP also needs a partner that will help get rid of things the ENFP does not need in their life. So there are four things the ENFP does not need. Four things the ENFP does not want that would really ruin their day. You could call these four things the four ENFP demons. The first demon for the ENFP is a boss. The ENFP does not need a boss. The ENFP does not need a ruler to tell them what to do. The ENFP does not need somebody strong and 
tough that will keep them uh, in line. They don't need somebody that will be harsh and tough on them. They don't need a pusher that will constantly push them through something. Rather, they need a partner that will understand and forgive them, a partner that will listen to them and give them understanding and perspective. The ENFP does not need or need a doer, you know, somebody that will keep on always doing something, a person that's constantly in a rush, a person that's always busy, a person that's always occupied with something. The ENFP does not need a partner that's constantly running around, chasing the next thrill, a person that is engaged with all kinds of sports and activity, a person that is always up to something, a person that's always got a party or a plan to go to. Because often this type will keep the ENFP from truly going down and sitting down with themselves and gaining that important reflection that they feel they truly do need. The ENFP neither needs a player, a competitor. The ENFP does not need somebody to compete with them or test them and question them and say, ha, I can do that better. The ENFP doesn't need somebody that will constantly push them and compete and challenge them and say, who will do this the fastest? The ENFP doesn't need somebody that will criticize them and say, if you would change that about yourself, you would be a lot more successful or happy. The ENFP neither needs a performer. The ENFP doesn't need somebody that will always crack jokes or make light of a situation. The ENFP doesn't need somebody that will always uh, turn things bright and light and happy and cheery. The ENFP needs sometimes somebody that can be serious with them. Somebody that can not just dismiss their ideas as crazy fun ha ha moments but can actually turn their ideas into serious proposals that somebody that will say oh hey that's a great idea hey ho what did i just say uh the enfp well because of this because of these four negative needs sometimes find themselves gravitating towards, for example, an ISTJ partner. You know, an ISTJ partner will often naturally absorb a lot of these things for an ENFP. They will keep ru the rules and the laws in check. They will keep your environment organized and disciplined and will make sure that things don't constantly turn into chaos. They will keep uh, the negative needs in your life out of your life by taking care of and acting in advance to take an organized and disciplined and keep things in line they will the istj will represent the moderate and patient partner a partner that doesn't rush them that doesn't uh, always push them a partner that will give them a logical point of view a person that will take their affection and take their wild ideas and uh, will take what they care about and will look at things clear-headedly and with detachment. So the INFJ represents the four saviors in an ENFP's life and ISTJ represents the demon cure or the cure towards the struggles of an ENFP's life. The ENFP might, however, also find themselves gravitating to a third potential match, another ENFP. Another ENFP can be a great as a sidekick, a sidekick relationship. You know, somebody that will uh, help you out, that will go through the same struggles you have. You know, every time you have a struggle, the other ENFP will have that struggle too. They will be just as stressed or upset as you are, just as happy or excited as you are. A partner like that can truly make an ENFP feel understood. You know, to have a partner that will share in your enthusiasm, a partner that will go, hey, I care about that too, and hey, that's also important to me. However, a sidekick has its downsides because both of you will have the same pitfalls and both of you will have the same spirals and the chances maybe you will uh, be breathing on each other's fire and stealing each other's ground. What if the other ENFP is so enthusiastic you feel you have to be the calm and level-headed one? What if you feel in this relationship that you have to be the disciplined one because the other person is so crazy? What if you feel that you have to take on the shadow traits of your own personality 
and to become good at whatever your partner struggles with. What I've noticed in a lot of relationships is we naturally tend to mirror our partners, which means we tend to want to balance them out. We tend to want to make sure that they are kept in check, that they are kept all right. The downside of the ISTJ is this kind of a partner will often be reining in your enthusiasm. They will often be controlling you. They will often be disciplining you. They will often be uh, keeping you from trying out new things. They will often hold you back on your enthusiasms and they will need something in return for you. The deal that I found with ISTJ ENFP relationships is this, you know, uh, the ISTJ keeps your ESTP demons out of the way while the ENFP keeps the ISTJ's uh, INFJ demons out of the way. So both of you will help each other deal with and absorb what it is that the other person doesn't need. So you are in that way required to overcome and uh, deal with and take care of everything that might you know might stress out or struggle cause struggles for your partner so okay what are the downfalls and struggles of the INFJ relationship INFJ ENFP why is that one sometimes difficult first it is uh, because in stress these types will be the opposite of what each other is need. When stressed and anxious, this will be the worst relationship. When in flow and when happy, this will be the best relationship. So at their worst, INFJs might constantly live, leave a big black hole of unresolved issues around them. They might uh, struggle to take charge and lead and they might get uh, sensitive and emotional and uh, they might become reclusive and withdrawn and they might uh, become too serious and too narrow-minded and too focused too hyper focused they might become martyr like and they might become overly sacrificing and in all of this they leave a big black hole of their inferior function and that's left for you to deal with they leave a black hole of your demons on your backyard. You come home, you notice, this, oh my god, this demon is in my house. You know, this uh, struggle, this big struggle is left for me to deal with. What the hell? <sighs> so what is this big demon they've left in your house? It's uh, all the things they forget to pay attention to. It's... Uh, all those daily chores that need to get done, all the things we need to do on a daily basis that the INFJ is caught up thinking about doing but never actually does. The other demon is, you know, all those uh, struggles, uh, like all those challenges, all those obstacles, all those things that the INFJ gets stuck on. So, okay, I will admit it, I'm not always the best partner to my ENFP. There are things I could do a lot better. And making these kind of videos and thinking about it really helps me understand my ENFP better and also helps me understand what I can do to be a better partner to my ENFP. So, the reason I'm making this video is because I want to help other people who are dating ENFPs and other ENFPs themselves help to understand themselves. I've noticed that a wide majority of you are screaming for relationship content and you ask me, okay, what is the best match for an ENFP and what is a good relationship like? And I hear your experiences of the different types. I hear some of you have had bad experiences with INFJs. Some of you have had great ones. Some of you have dated INFJs for 20 years. Some of you had a terrible flare out, that, a thing that lasted three weeks and suddenly, <laughs> yeah, everything went to shit. So what I notice is people's experiences of dating and love and romance is very divided. And people's experiences of the different types vary greatly. 
Still, I will argue and I will still say the three best choices are as follows. For the ENFP, look for an INFJ, an ISTJ or an ENFP partner. Those are the perfect matches of the ENFP. What are the other options that I want you to consider? First is the INTJ and ISFJ. They are great matches and they represent combinations of these things in one. Rather than getting the full package, you get a type that gives you a little of one thing and a little of the other. Then besides that, I could advise you to look at the ENFJ and the INFP. These are also very good matches because they represent the same values and the same aspirations like you. But a slightly different approach to it. So these relationships require you to understand your partner's different approach and style. Finally, there are two other good matches to consider and that's the ENTP and the ESFP personality type. They represent a mix, a combination of different things that are good for you and they also represent some of the things you need to improve and better yourself at. So with all of that out of the way, let me know in the comments down below, ENFPs, what type are you currently dating or what types are you currently most attracted to? What are you looking for in love and romance? What resonated the most with you in this video? If you resonated with this video, feel free to share it with other ENFPs or with your partner so that they can understand you a little bit better. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.